father was a superb squatter. To clarify, he had mastered the art of crouching deeply, knees nestled in his armpits, feet firmly anchored to the ground. Out on a hike, while the rest of us fussed over picnic spots, spreading anoraks out on the damp grass or perching gingerly on jagged boulders, Dad would just squat, perfectly poised, perfectly at ease. Of course, toddlers can crouch comfortably too, as do people the world over, accustomed to squat toilets. But for a British chap, brought up with a flushing toilet in the 1930s semi, this gravity-defying skill was remarkably uncommon. And he attributed it to the patch of wasteland and railway embankment at the bottom of his childhood garden. Dad grew up in Southgate in the 1940s. This was freshly built suburbia, neat rows of houses springing up in the wake of the Piccadilly extension line as it snaked its way northwards to Cockfosters. His father, Harold, a shipping clerk, had saved hard to set up home with his new wife, Muriel. And it was there that the two became parents, not long before the outbreak of war. The Oakwood Avenue house had a generous back garden by today's standards. The first part was a neatly manicured lawn with deep mixed borders filled with highly scented roses and Muriel's favourites, pinks. Beyond this was the vegetable garden, an allotment really, where Harold grew potatoes and runner beans. Then, a few steps further, where boundaries between the tame and unkempt blurred, was the start of a scrubby area and the embankment leading to the Piccadilly line carrying its passengers to King's Cross and the West End. And it was in this neglected spot that my dad and his best friend Ian spent many contented hours mucking about in the undergrowth, hunting bugs and beetles and, best of all, lighting fires. Quite what London Underground would have made of this, I'm not sure, but by my dad's account, the two boys regularly set fire to the railway embankment. Presumably not the huge inferno which this conjured up in my mind as a child. More likely little campfires that they squatted around, poking and prodding them with twigs, mesmerised by the flames. Jumping forward 40 years, my mum and dad had just moved house. We'd been living in the middle of a 1970s housing estate in Northumberland. A perfectly fine house a little overlooked by lots of others perhaps, and facing the wrong way as my dad was apt to complain, but it had served us well. Nonetheless, when the opportunity came to buy something affordable on the edge of the estate, they acted swiftly. These houses were on the periphery, a little further away from the barrack-bound thundering A1, but more importantly, they bordered on untamed woodland. For my father, this was a chance to relive his childhood, the removal van had barely left and my dad was already clearing a path through the brambles at the bottom of the garden and picking his way down the steep bank into the woods. Where neighbours had erected six-foot fences to keep weeds and wildlife at bay, the appeal for dad was the blurred boundaries, the encroaching wildness of the woods and the freedom to drift between the two. As the years passed, my dad spent many hours in the woods, messing around, as my mum would say. When he discovered a badger set, he ventured out at twilight to watch at a distance, gradually encouraging them into the garden, laying peanut trails for them to follow. It became a nightly ritual, putting out food for the badgers, switching out the lights and waiting for them to emerge from the hinterlands. Wildlife breaching the boundaries between countryside and suburbs. Then, in the last months of his life, his spine crumbling from the same form of cancer which had taken Ian's life, Dad asked us all to take him into the woods once more. We scrambled through holly and hawthorn and picked our way warily down the steep slope. Wife, daughter, son-in-law and grandchildren all helping Dad enjoy his last outing into the wilds. We planted him firmly in a camp chair while the boys fetched wood for a fire. Then Dad taught them to whittle sticks, which they used as skewers for marshmallows and dampers. My father, at the very edge of his life, the next generation squatting at his feet, perfectly balanced, utterly entranced by the dancing flames. <laughs>